Hello, Bible readers. It is Wednesday, December 30th. We're reading from Psalm 26, 40, 58, 61, 62, and 64. John chapter 4, verses 1 through 45. After the Cana miracle, John, you probably noticed, concentrates on the Jewish response to Jesus. You've got Mother Jesus, the mother of Jesus, Nicodemus, and John the Baptist's people. So all of these people would have been Jewish people responding to what happened at Cana uh, and more. And then th and there were uh, responses of no faith, the Jews, uh, limited faith like Nicodemus, and authentic belief, um, the mother of Jesus and John. Now the story goes to Samaria, then to Galilee, uh, where the royal official he may be a, a Gentile even. We're not exactly sure. But the woman, the Samaritan woman, is baffled in her own way. She has a, an experience with Jesus that is similar to Nicodemus. Uh, she too misunderstands the words of Jesus, similar to the way the Jews uh, misunderstand the words of Jesus, almost, almost willingly not getting it, but not willingly. Um, she may be rejecting Jesus initially also, but without the hostility that the Jews have. But of course, her story is not done right away in those first few verses. Verse 15 ends part one with her. Part two are verses 16 to 30, where maybe he might be fitting her understanding of Messiah or Christ. He speaks beyond the religious rivalry that happens between Samaritans and Jews from the South. Um, he states God is not a mountain or a place or a sanctuary. God is spirit uh, and all present personal presence to a believer. Uh, they are categories and words that she's just never imagined. He speaks like nobody else ever has. So she results really in a Nicodemus-like partial conditioned belief, but then many others come to fully believe, people from the village. Do you see a pattern here? Uh, John wants to paint a picture of those who conditionally believe or maybe partially believe, those who fully believe, and those who completely reject. And that's what we see again in this as, as Jesus brings this proclamation uh, to the Samaritans. Okay, so into the Psalms. Psalm 26. Um, you know, some days I read through the Psalms and I find them to be very uh, inspirational, clever. I don't know, this pack of Psalms today just, as I read them, just didn't catch me. But anyway, Psalm 26. Establish justice for me, O Lord. Um, basically, I've been good. Uh, and you're good. So, do what you do. Establish justice. Psalm 40. It's a person remembering a past deliverance. And remembering that one, the psalmist is kind of going back to the well. Like, hey, I know who, who you are and what you did then. I'm calling upon you to do that again because I need you. Uh, Psalm 58. This is a statement of belief. Uh, this could be a, a teaching psalm. There is a God who establishes justice. And so for those of us who are seeking justice, here's our, here's our God. Psalm 61. Uh, 61 and 62 and 63, they go together uh, really well. Of course, we're not doing 63. We're doing 64. But 61, God, I trust you and need help. This is not a sequential thing where first I trust you and then I call upon you for help, hoping that you'll help but it's feeling both at the same time. I trust you and I need help. Uh, psalm 62 follows up on the Psalm 61 and anticipates 63. 62 is a, a song of confidence and trust. Uh, and then 64 is a psalm where the psalmist is lamenting the wickedness and evil of so much of humanity, asking God to take action. I am one with my God. My God is with us, all of us at all times and in all places.